Well, it wasn't a very inviting place. Uh, I remember that uh, because I was at that time um, working at, uh, uh, in academia uh, and I had to bring people into Birmingham. And uh, when I bring visitors into Birmingham, there wasn't much that you could take and show them. Uh, there weren't the restaurants you could take them to, there weren't the hotels you could put them up in. Um, so Birmingham, way back, what, 30 odd years ago, was a very different place to what it is now. Were any of them ever put off, do you think? I think there were people who were put off by the Birmingham scene. It was a rather dull place. Uh, 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 there, were, uh, there was real poverty around the city centre in many respects. I think it may be an odd choice of word. Um, but it wasn't an inviting place and it didn't have the sort of facilities it's got now. So that's why I use the word poverty. There weren't the restaurants, there weren't the hotels, uh, there weren't the leisure facilities that we have around the city centre uh, now in 2015. Were you thinking to yourself then, you know, this is a big city, it's the second city, we should be doing better? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and that hit hard in, in the uh, mid-1980s, uh, when, of course, um, over a period of uh, a number of years, from late 1970s to early 1980s, Birmingham lost 200,000 jobs. Um, and there was a need, therefore. Uh, to rebalance the economy of Birmingham, uh, to bring investment in, um, and of course uh, that led us to thinking about what Birmingham had to offer. The problem was it didn't have very much to offer, uh, and consequently it was difficult in those early days to get the investment uh, to come into Birmingham to put things right. Now that isn't a problem because Birmingham means so much more to people, and investors are happy to invest in the city because they can see the returns they're going to get. Back in the 1980s, uh, that wasn't the case. Buildings apart, I mean, do you think Birmingham then had an image problem? Well, Birmingham certainly had an image, pro an image problem way back in uh, the 1980s. Um, uh, because of all that I've just been saying, um, it was uh, an economy which is based on manufacturing, uh, metal bashing, as they used to call it uh, then. Um, it was uh, a low skills uh, uh, economy in, in many respects. Um, and it was seen as the uh, traditional uh, manufacturing city. Uh, uh, there's a story that gets told about Queen Victoria, isn't it? Uh, coming through by coming by train uh, through through the West Midlands, and closing the uh, window blinds so she uh, couldn't see the the grime, if you like, of, of the black country in Birmingham. Now that. Uh, perception, if you like, of what this city was like, what the, the greater Birmingham area was like, unfortunately is a perception which has been carried through and even today there is a misconception about what Birmingham has to offer. And do you think the city fathers in those days were aware of it all and they think, oh you know, this is Birmingham, this is what it's like, we've got to put up with it sort of thing? I think there was an element of that. Uh, Birmingham folk um, are very proud of their city, um, but they, they uh, are not uh, uh, quick to uh, champion the city. Uh, they're inwardly proud and uh, Brummies uh, speak up for Brummies. Uh, but we actually have to sell Birmingham now on, on a much bigger uh, scale or rather further, further away in the region, nationally, etc. Um, and so it, it does require a, a different set of arguments. You can't uh, extol the virtues of Birmingham unless there are some virtues to extol. Because, I mean, you worked very hard from those early days, didn't you? Trying to change the image, trying to change the perception, getting things here, you know, think of built th things that have just gone up like the NEC and, and all the rest of it, which was, I mean, massive for the area. Yes, and that was uh, part about uh, part of that was about how you rebalance the economy of Birmingham. Uh, those several hundred thousand jobs lost were mainly in the manufacturing sector, but obviously um, those took out small businesses, uh, uh, which were dependent upon that manufacturing sector, and also took out the, the the shopkeepers and news agents in the local communities who served those big uh, manufacturing plants. Um, and therefore, we had to uh, do something about that. We had to rebalance the economy. Um, and so, the last twenty or so years. Have been exactly about, have been about exactly that. How do you rebalance Birmingham's economy? How do you make sure that it's no longer dependent on, on one sector? And so, what was the first big challenge that you took on? It really was in the uh, mid 1980s or late 1980s um, when we uh, decided that the uh, thing to do, the thing to start with, uh, it was the city centre. Uh, and people still today talk about perhaps there's been too much investment in the city centre. There had to be investment in the city centre in those days uh, because you had to start to make Birmingham an attractive city. And people see the city centre to begin with. They see other parts, they see 
see other suburbs uh, in due course. And, and Bourneville, for example, is a good example of a very nice suburb of, of Birmingham. Uh, but you had to do something about Birmingham city centre. Uh, and that's exactly what we did. So the International Convention Centre, for example, was th that first step in trying to regenerate the city centre of Birmingham. Because the University of Birmingham is, is very well known, it's a terrific place, there are some very good schools here, uh, there's a county cricket ground, I mean there, there were so many things here to build on which at least you could point to and say well we've already got these but we know we've got to do more. Yes, and, and, and what uh, you can say now is there are many more things on which we could build. So today's uh, opening of Grand Central um, is uh, an opening which follows on on Friday's opening of the new street station, um, which is uh, a follow-on from all the rest of the regeneration activities in the city centre over the last 10 and 20 years. Um, we've still got a long way to go. Let's not pretend that Birmingham hasn't got further regeneration uh, uh, and is in need of further regeneration. There are lots of schemes that we have to get on with, uh, but uh, the events of the last week or so uh, give us, I, I think, added momentum uh, to take those, uh, those matters forward. Because you, you needed a new station, you need new investment, you need new building shops, etc, etc. But I suppose some people turn around and say, well, you know, shouldn't this money be spent on education? Shouldn't this money be spent on housing? Well, it is being spent on education and it is being spent on housing. Uh, Birmingham City Council, as it happens, uh, this year and uh, last year, uh, were the biggest house builders in, in Birmingham. Uh, and that's, uh, I think, something we're rather proud of. Uh, we are spending money on education. 80% uh, uh, or thereabouts of our uh, maintained schools uh, here in Birmingham are rated good or excellent. Uh, that's a very, very good position to be in. Um, but you've also got to provide jobs. Uh, it's, uh, education leads to jobs, we hope. Skills lead to jobs. Uh, and so we've had to invest and uh, get the private sector to invest in providing those jobs uh, uh, into which well-educated youngsters can uh, access, uh, into which uh, uh, the people of Birmingham uh, um, can uh, respond to, um, and therefore make Birmingham and Birmingham's future that much better than it would otherwise be. And probably only half a mile away from here, we've got one of the most amazing libraries in the world. In, indeed, uh, uh, I think Birmingham is very proud of that library, uh, and so it should be. Um, uh, but the library is one thing. Uh, there are other things in the city centre which are we should be equally proud of, and I think what we've done today in the opening of Grand Central adds to that uh, 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 that range of activities, uh, that range of buildings, uh, which Birmingham people can really be proud of. And I would imagine that that development it was pretty key to get somebody like John Lewis in, wasn't it? Yes, uh, the Bull Ring, uh, of course, opened uh, some uh, 13 or so years ago uh, with anchor tenants in terms of Selfridges and Deb Debenhams. Uh, John Lewis decided not to come in at that time. Do you know why? Um, there were a number of reasons, but uh, I, I, it's no point in dwelling on that. John Lewis are now here, um, and it's great that they are here. Uh, and it does give Birmingham uh, a, a reputation for retail, which most other cities don't have. We've got a, a very big Harvey Nichols opening up. Uh, the, doubling of the size of Harvey Nichols in the mailbox. We've got Selfridges, we've got John Lewis, we've got Debenhams. Uh, Birmingham is now becoming or, or providing a shopping offer that uh, most other cities in Britain cannot provide. Of course, half a mile away from here during your time with the council, you've seen the development of, around Brindley Place, the Symphony Hall, the ICC, uh, the mailbox. I mean, these are all a lot of things in a relatively short space of time, aren't they? Yes, the uh, ICC opened in 1990, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, along with the Symphony Hall. Um, of course, uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, we I think we knew what we were doing. We were trying to inject uh, uh, activities into the city centre to make it a place in which to live, making it a place in which to work, uh, 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 making, uh, making it a place where people could come and uh, enjoy uh, leisure time. Uh, Therefore, Symphony Hall, the ICC, the restaurants, the hotels, um, John Lewis, uh, Grand Central, uh, uh, New New Street Station are all components, if you like, of that regeneration, or perhaps we should use the word renaissance, the renaissance of Birmingham. And of course, you've had party political conferences here as well, which whatever your particular view on, on what, they, what they do or don't do, I mean, they are a big factory. It's getting people into the city, isn't it? People spending money, going to the hotels, etc. Oh, absolutely. And uh, this is what's so good about the New Street Station development. Uh, New Street Station, uh, as many, many people know, was a dingy place, is a, a place that didn't, people didn't want to come through. Uh, what you've now got is a, a wonderful station, uh, uh, light, uh, uh, 
full of space that people can wander through. Grand Central now uh, add, adds to that. Um, and let's remember that, okay, we have lots of commuters coming into the city every day uh, who are coming in here to work, but we also have lots of visitors uh, who come through New Street Station. That's their port of entry, if you like, into Birmingham. I'm sure that when they came through the old New Street Station, they, they must have thought, well, what's Birmingham got to offer me? When they come through the new New Street Station, I, I think they'll be coming, uh, they'll feel they're coming into an, excite, an exciting, vibrant city. If there was only one thing in all the things we've talked about that you're particularly pleased or proud of, what would it be? Oh, I, I wouldn't single out a single thing. I, I think it's the package of activities uh, which have started to make Birmingham great. Uh, we've got some way to go still. There are a few things that we need to, uh, to deal with. But Birmingham is uh, an exciting, vibrant city. Birmingham is a city which can hold its head up high. Uh, we, the Birmingham people can be proud of what uh, Birmingham has become and should be agitating, if you like, uh, for all the other things that we need to do over the next 10 and 20 years. Because in your time in, in local politics, we worked out, what is it, 35 years, did we decide? <laughs> um, you've had to oversee things like the loss of the car industry, which, I mean, was a major, major part of, of, of this part of the world. Wasn't it? Well, if you'd have said to me uh, 10 or 20 years ago there'd be a re-emergence of the car industry in Birmingham, I'd have laughed at you. But, of course, that's exactly what's happened, and it's thanks to Jaguar Land Rover. We now have uh, a really uh, incredible uh, economic achievement at, uh, up at Castle Bromish and across in Solihull and indeed up in Liverpool, which is where the third plant is. Uh, but Jaguar Land Rover have transformed themselves, and in transforming themselves, uh, they've also transformed the uh, advanced uh, manufacturing industry of Birmingham. So we now see a growth in advanced manufacturing. And 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought that would have happened. And of course, the thing is, you, you've always got to try and be one step ahead, haven't you? You've got to try and think, right, what should we be doing next? Where should we be going? Have you and all the council got plans for this? Yes. <laughs> no, I know what that is. <laughs> yes. Um, you can slow, or we could see the slowing of the economic growth of Birmingham if we don't deal with one of the outstanding issues, and that's transport. Uh, Birmingham needs a better transport infrastructure than what it has at the present moment in time. We've issued uh, long-term uh, plans for that, uh, and uh, the money is now uh, being assembled to extend the tram routes, uh, to put in a fast uh, bus network. Uh, we do need to extend public transport uh, across the city, otherwise the congestion that uh, will come in future years uh, will actually slow down economic growth. Was there a message in the fact that when you designed or they built Grand Central that there was very, very limited parking there? You're saying, hey, we're on top of a great station, come and use it. Yes, and, and, and that's what's happening. The problem is people are, are now using heavy rail to come into Birmingham in numbers that uh, a few years ago uh, wasn't happening uh, and therefore New Street Station had got to a point uh, which uh, where it was at maximum capacity in terms of people on platforms etc indeed there were times when New Street Station had to be closed down for health and safety reasons well the same is beginning to happen at Moore Street and Snow Hill those stations are also nearing capacity uh, and we have plans to do something about Snow Hill uh, over the next few years I hope we can bring that out into the public domain um, and we'll see a rebuilding of Snow Hill Station just as we've seen a, a remodeling and rebuilding of Moore Street and New Street.